Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Chrissy Hodges, advocate for OCD, in particular the community name Pure OCD, which is Intrusive Thoughts with Mental Rituals. Uh, this is also the name of my memoir, Pure OCD, The Invisible Side of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. I'm a certified peer support specialist. I work uh, with, in consultation doing peer support around the world, providing support for anybody working toward recovery in any stage of recovery. Even if you're just contemplating therapy or if this is the first time you've ever opened up to anyone about OCD, uh, that is, I am someone that can support um, and be there for you. I also provide referral consultations so I can help point you to therapists wherever you are in the world. No CD and OCD is an app. Inside the app, you can find many resources, including being able to connect to people who have OCD. They also provide telehealth doing ERP in many, many places around the world. So to find out a little bit more about them, download their app at No CD and their website is treatmyocd.com. Today I wanted to talk about something that I really feel like is important. It can be hugely stigmatized. Uh, it can come with a lot of shame. This is something you, we don't talk about openly. There's always been this myth that if you talk about suicide, that means people are more likely to attempt um, or die by suicide. That is a myth. Um, in fact, not talking about it does not normalize the fact that suicidal ideation and thinking about suicide happens when you are in a situation that you are suffering to the extreme which is exactly what happens to us when living with OCD. Now, this video is not about uh, suicidal themed OCD. That falls under the category of harm OCD. Um, and basically when you're dealing with suicidal uh, OCD, it is that you are worried that you um, have suicidal thoughts or that you are going to get depressed and you are going to attempt or um, die by suicide. Uh, and this definitely goes under the branch of OCD with harm OCD, self-harm, things like that. This video is not about that. Um, and so I do want to say to you that if you do have suicidal OCD and you're here looking for reassurance, this is not the video for you. We are going to talk about what it is like to experience suicidal ideation when you're living with OCD. In fact, this video might really be triggering for you and I'm not going to invite you to do an exposure um, on this video um, because this is a this is an important topic that um, anybody living with OCD needs to hear and have normalized in their experience. What do I mean when I say normalize the experience? Why do we want to normalize the experience of thinking about suicide? Here's why. Suicide comes with a lot of shame, just the thoughts in general. Why? Because from the very beginning that we even talk about or think about or hear about suicide, it is ingrained in all of us that suicide is a selfish act. Okay, well, I don't, I mean, you can think whatever you want about that phrase or what you think about it. Um, I personally don't think it's a selfish act and I'm not going to even go down the, I'm not going to go down the pathway of, oh, you could have exhausted your resources and you're selfish for doing that and you leave behind loved ones, blah, 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 blah. Fine. That, you know, some that stuff may be true and, and that stuff may be real for some people, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about what it feels like to think about suicide, to think about wanting, and this is what I wanted to get across to you today, wanting to end this suffering that you are scared is never going to end. When I talk to clients about having suicidal ideation, which is having ideas about suicide, having thoughts about suicide, having thoughts about self-harm to end what is going on in your brain, end the suffering, right? When I talk to people about, I, I will tell you, many people that I meet with have had suicidal ideation or have attempted suicide or have really seriously thought about it um, at some point in their experience with OCD. If you haven't, that doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean that you need to, or that doesn't mean uh, that you don't have OCD or that your OCD isn't serious enough. None of that. I just want to normalize the idea that so many people who live with OCD and especially not being able to access treatment or have lived with this for years and years and having no idea what this is may experience thoughts of suicide. I'm here to tell you that there is no shame in that. There is no, you are a selfish being. There is no, uh, you should be ashamed of yourself and people are going to look at you differently. I mean, in all honesty, people might look at you differently if you disclose that, but people who don't, people don't understand the, the concept of suicide, um, suicidality, suicidal ideation. They don't understand. They, 
a lot of people just form that opinion based on what they have been fed by the media, based on what they've been fed by their upbringing. Maybe they had an experience of lo losing someone and they didn't understand and they did need to adopt the idea that that person was selfish uh, because they got hurt and they felt like it was a selfish act. Again, I want to explain to you, I do not believe that. I am a survivor of a suicide attempt. You may or may not know that. When I was 20 years old, I'd had OCD at that point for 12 years. This was back in the day that we didn't have internet. We had AOL dial up and it was fairly new in the late 90s. I had nowhere to turn. I had been suffering for 12 years with OCD symptoms, on and off depression, thinking I was the only person in the world walking on this earth that had these horrendous thoughts that I couldn't figure out that I was terrified of and I was terrified to tell anyone about the thoughts. I remember thinking about suicide as an option when I was 14. That seems terrifying, doesn't it? But the way that I view it now and the way that I have compassion for myself is this. At 14, when I had sexual intrusive thoughts hit me square in the face and I had no idea what was going on, I was suffering so tremendously and I saw no way out and I thought I cannot live the rest of my life harboring these horrible thoughts and feelings and images and knowing there's no way out except for to endure it or except for to accept that these thoughts are real because that is not that was not part of my values that is not what I wanted that was not the life that I wanted and I was I was scared and I remember thinking also, the depression piece, when that would get to me, it would get so hard, I would see no way out. No one knew what was going on, and I did think to myself, if this gets too bad, I could just kill myself. Did I want to? No. Did I want to live life? Yes. I desperately wanted to live life, but I remember I didn't know I had OCD, and there was no information out there like there is now. Again, there was no internet. I d did not think that I could live my life, the, the rest of my life, enduring this horrible secret, enduring this suffering on my own, not thinking that I was nuts, having no outlet. And that is what I wanted want to emphasize in this video. Suffering is the reason why we even contemplate suicide or have suicidal ideation to begin with. <clears throat> Living in this trapped suffering, you, you want a way out. And if you don't feel like that there is a way out, that is the brain and the body and the, the, any, any part of you is natural way of thinking of, okay, if there is no way out, can I endure this and will I endure this? Or, or am I going to have to accept that this is how life is and I refuse to do that? So in a, in a strangely natural way, you go, well, I'm not going to live like this. And that's when suicidal ideation comes up. And that can be terrifying for us. Because, hey, we don't want to die. We, don't, we, don't, we want to live, but we want to live without the suffering of OCD. Take away the suffering with the OCD and you take away you know, the thoughts of wanting to die by suicide. So they do go hand in hand and this is one thing I definitely like to drive home with people who feel a ton of shame about in the past having suicidal thoughts or in the past maybe even having a suicidal attempt or feeling suicidal when I'm speaking with them or um, even cur currently or previously, um, the shame that comes around that the shame that they're weak or they're a failure. I want to say something that you may or may not agree with. People like us and the things that we go through are some of the strongest, most resilient people on the planet. We walk through life getting the shit kicked out of us by our own brain. Our own brain basically abuses us. And for many of us, we just endure it in silence 24-7. You know, and, and e e even if you've had effective treatment, when OCD can come back and you experience their lapse, you can experience this again. And that, that suffering can bring up trauma from the first time or trauma from rock bottom. And sometimes 
your brain just goes, I just don't want to do this. And I just feel like, what if we had a way out? And that can create panic. And then that can also create, what if I do act on it? What if I do die by suicide? What if I do snap and lose it? That can go into a whole nother realm. But what I do want to share with you today is this. If you have experienced suicidal ideation, if you've had a suicide attempt, or if you've seriously contemplated it, you are not alone. And you aren't weak. And you aren't selfish. It is a natural reaction to the degree of suffering that we face with this illness. The reason I'm saying that is I want to try to lift the shame for you and to give you the gift of some self-compassion for what you endure with this disorder. I also want to emphasize, and of course this is a disclaimer, if you are suicidal and you have a plan, that is when you have got to seek help. I know it is scary to seek help when you have taboo intrusive thoughts or you don't know if you're gonna get the correct help or if people are gonna believe you. Here's the thing though, if you are at that phase where you have a plan and you are gonna execute it or you're even thinking about executing it, please go get help. Even if it's just getting help without having to disclose your themes, even if it's just going to get help and saying, I am suffering with this debilitating disorder and I need help, I need intervention. That isn't necessarily bad and it, and it doesn't necessarily have to reflect on you. And you know what? A lot of people don't even need to know that you're seeking out help. You are HIPAA protected, at least here in America. And I know other countries have confidentiality rules as well. Please go get the help you need. When I was suicidal and I attempted suicide back when I was 20, back in the late 90s where there was no information about OCD, I didn't know I had it. Surviving the suicide attempt was devastating because I was so scared. What is going to happen now? Am I going to have to live out these intrusive thoughts? Am I going to have to accept that they're real now that I'm saying them out loud? I did get hospitalized. Um, I didn't know how to communicate that I just needed some intervention um, and maybe some outpatient. Um, I, you know, and I'd already attempted at that point, so I was putting it on a hold. Um, but I was so, I am so grateful for that intervention. I'm so grateful that I did get a diagnosis and that at least I had some resources after that um, and that I was able to reset the depression, um, which for me, medication helped a lot with the depression piece. Um, and then really just kind of going through um, with a suicide attempt and surviving and then being able to, to say, okay, I need to make a plan moving forward, which was empowering for me when before I had nothing. I didn't even know what was going on. So even just reaching out and for help and an intervention at some point, it, it might help even just move the needle a little bit closer to relief. If you are contemplating or if you have a plan for suicide, please, please reach out for help please, to a crisis intervention team, to somebody. You don't have to disclose details, but get the help you need at least to weather that depressive storm um, that sometimes really ebbs and flows for us and sometimes can, sometimes can hang around a lot longer than we need it to when we need it to break. So my video today, I know it may have been a little bit all over the place, but I just wanted to say I understand what it is like to feel like you just need a way out because you can't take the suffering anymore. And then I also understand the shame that comes along with, well, I'm having suicidal thoughts and that makes me weak and stupid and I should be stronger than that. That's not the case. This is a horrible, tough disorder. And having those thoughts doesn't say anything about your character. All it says is that you're human and that enduring suffering for as long as we do and for as intensely as we do can be very scary. And sometimes we think to ourselves, we have to seek a way out. I hope that you are hearing me say that the way out is just continuing to ask for help, continuing to fight for the life that you can have while living with OCD. I am so glad that I did not die by suicide on that night. Um, and that I was able, even though it was so painful to have an intervention and I was so scared. It was worth it and now I'm here with you. And if I can do it, you can do it. And I am so sorry that you go through this and that you feel that way, but you do not have to feel like having those thoughts is your fault or that makes it 
something bad about you. Thank you for being here and thank you for listening to this video. And I know this is a tough topic and I'm so sorry if you go through this and you are not alone. Visit ChrissyHodges.com for more information about my services and for an OCD, treatmyocd.com. Thanks for being here.